thanks, Chrissy, and thanks to the organisers uh, Vertical Events for getting Gateway to come and present again. And thanks for everyone for turning up and online listen to the story. And yeah, it's been a bit of excitement at Gateway the last couple of months in particular, after what was a tough few years for, for junior gold explorers and, and things are really starting to, to look up. Um, the uh, usual disclaimer and the like, which can be read on our website. So with Gateway, I mean, we consider it really pretty much an unparalleled value proposition at the moment. Like I said, with the way that things have gone the last couple of years with junior gold explorer evaluations, uh, you know, Gateway's an explorer with great land package in a fantastic part of WA, which really is a, a tier one jurisdiction for gold exploration in the world. About half a million ounces, just over half a million ounces of resources, which look at our current market capitalisation, you know, leaves things at about $10 in uh, enterprise value per ounce. So just to put that in perspective, some of the recent sort of junior asset sort of transactions, Kin and Strickland and the like in the last six to nine months, looking at 80 to $90 a resource ounce. So that just gives you an indication of of where things have got to and, and, and the value that can be had. But not only that, and this is probably the most important thing for me and most pleasing thing, is that the last just over 12 months, we, we had a, a definite change in strategy in that we knew we had to look for, for step change discoveries in the project to really take it forward to get beyond this half million ounce threshold and, and, and get up into to something that really makes it a project of significance. And we, we stuck to our guns through last year in, in what was a, a tough time for explorers. And with this, with this exploration focus and generating new targets, and we're really starting to see the, the fruits of that in the, in the last few months. A couple of new discoveries, some pretty exciting drilling going on at the moment, and really, as far as you know, where we are and, and what the company is, uh, 2024 is going to be fantastic. And, and to do that, we've got the team, the management, and also the shareholders behind us to, to really make sure we propel Gateway forward. A bit of a quick corporate summary. Um, the important takeaways there, I suppose, you know, our biggest shareholder, Kerry Hermanis, has been, been with the company for a long time. Uh, he's stuck with us and, and backed us, and we really appreciate his backing. And not only that, all our top 20 who have been there for, for a long time, particularly the last sort of six years when the company was reset. Um, and they've always helped us uh, you know, through, through good times and bad, which is really appreciated. Um, directors there got a, a fair stake in the, in the game. And um, you know, if we look at the capital structure, still fairly tight for a, a, an explorer of the size that we are and really, really leaves us leverage to, to upside. I mentioned the team. I won't go through everyone's uh, sort of credentials there, but really what I, what I can say is that within that group, we've got a background in, in, in technical, uh, not only exploration and, and, and discovery, but, but growing companies, running feasibility stop, uh, studies, operating mines, um, and, and really creating va value for shareholders. So where are we? Well, Gateway's just north of Sandstone in the Murchison region of WA, uh, historic goldfield of WA. Um, it's a pretty un unconsolidated area in terms of the majority of the resources in this area are controlled by, by juniors like ourselves. Uh, out to the west of us, a lot of the ground's been consolidated with West Gold and Romelius and the like. Out to the east, same sort of story with goldfields and Bellevue. This part of WA, for various reasons, is, is still in the hands of a lot of juniors and, and you know, the opposite upside for that from a, from a uh, corporate point of view, but not only that, it, it gives us a real foothold and it enables us to get hold of a, a pretty undervalued asset and take it forward. I mentioned our, our focus the last 12 months, we, we went back and really looking for step change discoveries, pulled the project apart um, and looking for, for, for making these things that are going to create real value for the company and its shareholders and, and we're starting to see the fruits of that now. So last year we began this project wide study, we went back to sort of, you know, bare basics if you like pulled apart the geology, got some structural experts in, started reinterpreting things. And not only that, and a, a key, what turned out to be a pretty key uh, move for us was we did a, a 2D seismic survey over part of the project, which really helped us pull things together and gave us a couple of different interpretations that now we are starting to see the benefits of. Um, and it's, it's led to new discoveries in the last few months. In January, we announced the new duplex Discovery, which sits in a not far from our existing resources, but in a new new rock type and a new new deposit style, and this flame tree magmatic copper nickel PGE target, which is really exciting and uh, and and something that we're drilling right now. So we've got duplex down there, and then we've got flame tree not far away. So duplex, this was an area we identified south of our existing resources, uh, different rock type to what hosts most of the the resources historically in the area, which were. Um, up to the north were, were subjected to um, open pit mining in the early 90s by Herald Resources and a couple of other deposits around there, but this sits in a gabbro further to the south. 
We looked at this rock type and knew that it was pretty prospective elsewhere in WA and, and not only that, um, immediately next door to us in Horizons Ground. We sort of persisted there with um, what, we, what we thought was a, a good place to be and, and we did some RC drilling in December last year, um, following up a couple of phases of air core drilling and we can see the best intersection there of 18 metres at five grams per tonne at 100 metres. Uh, fantastic result for us and, and sort of vindicating that strategy. And, We've just finished last week a follow-up RC program out there at Duplex, which results will be coming in the next sort of three to four weeks. We can just look in section what that looks like. Pretty standard Eastern Goldfields uh, gold discovery and um, hopefully a lot more to come. So flame tree, copper nickel target. This really was a, a, a byproduct of this reinterpretation of, of the geology of the belt. Some work that was done by Gateway out there in 2013, targeting a, a bit of a VMS target, a lot of, lot of near surface copper was intersected, never really explained. There was one interesting intersection in the database, that whole 283, which wasn't really a, a VMS style intersection, it had copper, it had nickel, platinum, palladium, cobalt, so real typical magmatic signature, uh, is in massive sulphides in a really obscure ultramafic that was logged and everyone just thought it was uh, a bit of a, a logging anomaly and wasn't really true. We went back and the seismic helped us turn the geology on its head, if you like. Um, we had another look at the chips, it was definitely ultramafic. In December we went and drilled a, an RC hole out there back the other way to scissor it to confirm this new interpretation on the geology, which, which come up good. And not only that, we intersected some sulphides ourselves in that RC hole, only thin ones, but up around the percent copper, uh, you know, 0.4% nickel, again with the uh, PGEs and cobalt, so confirming that magmatic signature. Um, the hole actually ended in a metre at a percent copper, um, and uh, you know, we really took a lot of encouragement out of that. But separate to that whole process, there was an EM survey conducted back in the day, uh, a, a fixed loop survey. We reprocessed that independent of our own work and come up again with this east dipping interpretation at depth. And that's a fairly strong EM conductor down there, 12,500 Siemens. Uh, it's a discrete anomaly. It's, it doesn't look to be stratigraphic. So right now, we're, we're drilling a uh, diamond hole into this target as we speak. And that's a, a pretty exciting thing for us. Bit of, a, bit of a, uh, a step away from our gold exploration. We're still focused on gold, but this was such a compelling target that we couldn't walk away from it. This, le this led us to, to have another look at what has been targeted historically in the area from a similar point, point of view, particularly in the late 70s, early 80s. A lot of existing targets that haven't been followed up to the north at the Montague Range intrusion. Um, we can see there some of the, uh, the, the near surface um, results that have come from this historic exploration. So really, there's a lot of, uh, lot of exciting targets of a similar ilk to follow up on the project and, and really um, you know, we're pretty excited by what could be and, and the type of value that we could create for, for Gateway shareholders. On a bigger picture, we can see there the seismic there that, uh, and, and how that led to this reinterpretation. Really, we got the, the dome itself and, and, and all the geology folded underneath it. This sort of flipped everything on its head from traditionally how we've been looking at things and we went back and had a look at a lot of our old data and um, it really did, initially we thought it was a bit of a, an anomaly of, of geophysics and sometimes you, you take it with a grain of salt, but this is turning out to be, be uh, you know, closer to the truth and it's really opening up a lot of, a lot of areas for us to go back and, and make new discoveries in this project. Um, again, still doing this grassroots exploration, we can see this is up the north end of the tenement, an area undercover, hasn't traditionally been explored, the tenure was only granted last year. First pass soil sampling survey over there, um, a nice, you know, two and a bit kilometre long anomaly with uh, basically no drilling into it. This is a whole new area we'll get into and a couple of other areas we're completing first pass soil sampling over. Um, just sort of ha highlighting the fact that this, yes, we got half a million ounces. Yes, the, the ground had some historic mining in the early 90s, but there's a lot of work to do here and a lot of discoveries to be made. And we're really excited by this potential. So I guess one of the other sort of uh, little side things we got into last year was we did a, uh, a bit of a strata titled uh, JV with Sensor, who have uh, recently um, relisted as a, a lithium specific explorer. Um, they have come in, they're exploring a few of our tenements for lithium, not something that we had any expertise in and, and wanted to divert into, but it's something that we saw their opportunity through Sensor to add some value, and they're up there doing that independent of our work and free carrying us. So in summary, 
We're a dedicated explorer in a great part of WA, in a great part of the world. We've got half a million ounces already and a pretty, pretty cheap valuation when you look at things, but we've been focused on these step change discoveries and what we're really doing is making them. There's a lot of exciting work underway as we speak and a lot of exciting results to come. So thanks for your time and thanks for listening. And I've got the booth out in the, in the foyer there if anyone wants to catch up. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you.